Hey guys, we are here at Sea Turtles Inc. on South Padre Island in Texas. And we're checking out turtles. We're learning all about sea turtles because you know I had to come find where they take care of sea turtles whenever we're near an ocean. So let's show you all about Sea Turtles Inc. So the building behind us is the future hospital for the turtles here at Sea Turtles Inc. And when it's done, it's going to be the largest sea turtle hospital in the world. And they're going to stick to just doing sea turtles here. That's what they rescue. And they're building, as you can hear. That's construction going on. <laughs> so it's pretty exciting that this place is getting bigger and bigger. And we've learned so much about the sea turtles down here in South Padre. For me, and wiggle it, that more you just wiggle it is the size of a sea turtle's brain. So <laughs> they oftentimes will get confused between plastic and real food out in the wild. Uh, what a sea turtle does is just plastic like this. It gives them a fake sense of wholeness. So they will ultimately stop seeking out real food and will ultimately cause them to strand on a beach. Okay, so these beautiful creatures aren't the sharpest tool in the shed, so they rely on us to protect them. They need to come onto the surface for air. However, if they are entangled in debris and trash that is too heavy for them to swim with, they will unfortunately drown. We learned what we can do to help mitigate the things made by humans that are accumulating in our oceans and are deadly to them. We visited the current temporary turtle hospital, which is like comparing a fly to a 747 airplane when you look at the new hospital being built. So we welcome you to the hospital portion of our facility. We currently have 10 patients out here, spread out amongst these four tanks. So last week where we got here, they released some, but we weren't here yet. They, let, they notify the public through their Facebook page so hopefully they'll release some of these guys while we're still here. I didn't realize that the green had only seen juveniles before. I didn't realize they get up to 500 pounds. I had no idea. Returning to the main center of Sea Turtle Inc. is where we found several of the larger permanent residents who could not survive in the wild. South Padre Island has a special affection and commitment to protecting and rescuing endangered sea turtles that began with one woman. Isla Locher was a well-known pilot and a friend of Amelia Earhart's. After a visit to Rancho Nuevo, Mexico, where she spent two weeks volunteering in the care of highly endangered Kemp's Ridley sea turtles, she along with others literally brought this love for them back to South Padre Island. Sea turtles always return to the beach where they hatch to lay their eggs, and they've been doing just that since 1974. Isla began rescuing and caring for sick and injured sea turtles in her home. Guests to her home wanted to help, and in 1977, she formed Sea Turtle Inc. Isla passed away in 2000, and Turtle Park was created in honor of her. The nonprofit was able to purchase land and build the hospital, as well as a new education center, all as a result of donations.
can support Sea Turtle Inc. by shopping their online gift shop, donating or adopting or visiting here. Your admission also supports the center. If you visit South Padre Island, be sure to connect through their website or Facebook page. You might have the opportunity to help with hatchling and patient releases, and there's a number you can use to help if you find a nest on the beach. You can use this QR code here, or I've put links in the description of this video. Basically, uh, an extraordinary event. We typically would have power in these types of situations. A3 of operations here of Sea Turtle Rescue at the South Padre Island Convention Center and Visitors Bureau. We've collected a lot, now we'll try to save them. The Queen Isabella Causeway connects South Padre Island with the mainland. The causeway is 12,514 feet long, 2.37 miles, and is the only road connecting the island as well as the island's source for fresh water and power. As you approach the mainland, the historic Port Isabel Lighthouse stands as a greeting. If it's after sundown, the soft glow of its third order Fresnel lens will beacon a welcome. Although the light no longer rotates, it's still a beautiful sight. There's something romantic about visiting a lighthouse. Symbols of human ingenuity and safety, they were literally a guiding light to ship captains braving the dangers of the sea. Adjacent to the lighthouse is the Port Isabel Visitor Center. It contains some very nice displays about the lighthouse and its place in Texas history. Located near the southern tip of the Texas Gulf Coast, the lighthouse has withstood the elements for more than 172 years. And during the Civil War, both sides used the lighthouse. The lighthouse itself has not been used as a navigational beacon since 1905 but the current 750 pound third order Fresnel lens is a reproduction which was installed in 2022. Of the 16 lighthouses along the Texas coast, the Port Isabel Lighthouse is the only one that's open to visitors. Admission to the lighthouse itself is $5 for adults, $4 for seniors, and $3 for children ages five to 12. Top step is a big step. My backpack doesn't fit. It's tiny there, my backpack and me didn't fit. So I had to turn sideways. A whole bunch of tiny little steps. Yeah. And we look out on the Port Isabel. So we're camped right out there. brand new all of this I wonder if it's new or they just clean basically they quit using the lighthouse in 1905 and it fell into disrepair um, prior to that in the Civil War it went dark during the Civil War both sides um, were trying to prevent the other side from being able to use it but both sides ended up using it as a lookout but they kept the light out all that time. And then in 1905, it went dark for good. So they let it kind of go into disrepair for many years. In World War I, they again used it for a lookout. 
Um, and then it really went down, 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 down. So it's been newly renovated within the last 30 years, 25 years. It's been newly renovated within the last 25 years um, and reopened and you can come visit. Do you imagine making this climb twice a day? Yeah, you'd be in pretty good shape. Or you'd go crazy like Willem Dafoe did in that movie. Which movie? There's a movie about, I think it's called The Lighthouse, I think is what it's called. There are supposed to be guys that are manning the lighthouse and end up going crazy and almost killing each other. So. <laughs> That's kind of what would happen, I guess, if you're stuck here by yourself for a long period of time. Kind of like it. cabin fever. Yeah. Okay, and now you face going down. And way back in the 1800s, they got the first pool floaty to use so they wouldn't bang their head. So tiny steps, you can only use your toes, unless you have little feet. Well, that's a ladder. That's not actually a step. That's true. Hold on. Okay. Okay, more tiny steps. This is not a ladder. This part is steps. Yeah. I think I should go backwards, but I'm not. If your kids or your inner child are looking for amusement, then you'll probably want to make a stop at Gravity Park on the island. It's next to the Sandcastle exhibition that we shared with you on our Free Things to Do on South Padre Island episode. There's a link in the description of this video or use the QR code here or link that you'll see pop up if you're watching on a computer, phone, or tablet. Gravity Park is only open in the evenings and has amusement park attractions and some pretty exciting rides. And though we had no interest in getting slingshotted into the air on the tallest reverse bungee in the world, it was pretty entertaining to observe those who took the bait and strapped into this. It was also fun to watch the victims of the giant swing who willingly stepped up to be wrapped like a burrito and launched from a crane. The adult go-kart track looked like the most fun to us with its multi-level race course. The park has several other rides and fun things to do, and you got it. There's links in this video's description. If you've always thought it would be cool to drive on the beach, there's a place for that as well on South Padre Island. Edwin King Atwood Park Beach Access Number 5 towards the north end of the city of South Padre Island is where you can enter the beach with your prepped vehicle. You'll pay $12 for this joyride and there's a list of things you should do to prep your vehicle. Four-wheel drive is recommended for driving if you want to go all the way to the northern tip or driving on the beach during normal or high tides. But two-wheel drive with high clearance is said to be okay for low tide. I've put a link in the description for those important steps. On one of our last days on the island, we discovered what turned out to be our favorite restaurant on the beach. The Palms Cafe on the beach is on the same property as the Boutique Hotel The Palms Resort. The cafe is comfortable and very laid back, and it's all outdoors, although a portion of the restaurant is covered. The view of the ocean and the friendly vibe from the staff made it really enjoyable. Generous pours on the wine and fresh seafood done right was great, and it was surprisingly affordable with selections for many budgets. 
This is the last episode of our spring travel to Southern Texas, where we went from famous historical cities to small towns, and we especially loved the Texas coast. For most of the trip, we stayed in public campgrounds like city, county, and state parks that were very budget-friendly and usually closer to nature. We found plenty of free and affordable things to see and do throughout the trip and shared them in our Travel Texas series playlist. We invite you to review all the information provided if you're thinking of traveling to Southern Texas, especially if you'll be camping. You can use this QR code or click on the link here if you're watching by computer, cell phone, or tablet. And as always, we've provided links to everything we talk about in the descriptions for each episode. You'll also find links to products and services we use and recommend, and whenever we can, we'll provide discounts that you can use. When you use those links, we sometimes earn a small commission, which is a great way at no additional cost to you of supporting the work we're doing with these videos. We hope you've enjoyed this Southern Texas travel series and found it helpful with your trip planning. And if you did, we'd love if you'd share it on your social content and with your friends and family. And if you're not yet a subscriber, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And ring that little bell because that way you'll be notified each time we upload new content. And make sure to leave a comment, that way you could be part of the conversation. Until next time. We'll see, see ya. ya.